Is there a real threat to the petrodollar system? COVID and Ukraine brought the timeline closer to the dollar's eventual demise. It seems that the whole world and its leaders have woken up from a deep sleep after two long COVID quarantines and are starting to do everything they envisioned on their own terms. As the world comes to an end with vaccine supplements and endless testing mandated by COVID, we are thrown into yet another crisis, perhaps returning to a kind of normalcy similar to pre-COVID times. It seems that world leaders and governments can only do a good job of justifying their dire policies and lobbying their agendas, from one crisis to the next. After all, how can they control the population or the narrative? Religion used to be the opium of the people, today it's fear. Fear alone is allowing people to give up their rights in the name of national security, or at least that's what they've been told. If managing the Zelensky-Putin headlines on an hourly basis isn't enough, it's mixed with commodity deficits stuck in billions of dollars in margin calls as institutions spit out assets. Another bombshell fell on the markets yesterday afternoon, when the WSJ reported that Saudi Arabia was considering trading oil in yuan for sales to China. Saudi Arabia is one of the top three oil producers along with Russia and the US China as the world's largest oil consumer so it looks like a direct match to trade with the yuan instead of the dollar. The petrodollar system has been in use since the 70s, when the US was a net oil importer. A natural relationship was established between Saudi Arabia and the United States, in which the dollars earned would sell their oil in exchange for reinvesting in the US Treasury market and security promises. The dollar has been the world's reserve currency and the currency basis of all goods that must be bought and sold in dollars. Countries that buy oil must first buy dollars in their local currency, then buy the commodities, only sell it back, and take the dollars and convert them back to their local currency. This stable demand for the dollar is one of the reasons for maintaining this reserve status. But if larger players decide to use another payment method, the system risks crashing. Battles were fought to keep this system in place or to deter any members from trying to leave. After Russia's attack on Ukraine, the fact that Russian banks are now subject to sanctions from the SWIFT system makes it very difficult for them to buy and sell dollars for their commodities, oil and gas. But if Russia produces about 10 MPBD and China needs about 10 MBPD, it doesn't seem like there really should be any need for dollars in the first place. So why would larger powers succumb to a system that can be shut down and suddenly be ostracized? This war showed that to China. They are preparing their own version of SWIFT, called the CHIPS system, but transactions have little conceptual value compared to SWIFT. Saudi Arabia and the region have deep ties to the United States, but the last Biden administration has done itself no favors in keeping those ties intact. President Trump was much better at being diplomatic and looking for something better, but President Biden and the Democratic Party have been more vocal about taking a tougher stance against them, not supporting their domestic war in Yemen or defending their stance against Iran. And there are still pending cases against them. When asked if Biden had misunderstood himself, MBS's latest comment, simply, I don't care, is quite revealing. U.S. hegemony has been under threat for years. But the pieces are slowly falling into place. Like most empires, it's only a matter of time before everything falls. Saudi Arabia traded only in dollars for its oil. They have been negotiating for years to trade with the yuan. But make no mistake, China is extremely smart as the world's largest buyer of all assets, they can choose the right time to make conditional demands in exchange for stability, trade deals and trade relations. All the districts and their leaders are accustomed to receiving subsidies and payments in dollars that allow them to spend abroad. Will the yuan still be seen as a safe currency for them to do so? China is working hard to stabilize its yuan, but it is far from being a reserve currency, let alone a transparent currency. If Saudi Arabia were to achieve this, it would have taken an important step out of historic allegiances and the US dollar, SWIFT system would have been complete. Commodities as we know them will cease to exist as we have known them for the past 50 years, and correlations will break as the dollar ceases to be its driving force. Perhaps a slow move to a basket of selected currencies such as the euro, yen, yuan and others would be a more viable alternative to trading oil and commodities. But sorry, the wheels of change are already in motion. Covid and Ukraine have brought this timeline closer to the dollar's eventual demise.